If you find that this message has been a blessing to you, please take a moment and share with someone. Thank you. Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled, and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Father. We thank you for giving to us understanding of your word. We thank you, Lord, for giving us direction, giving us direction in the word that you would have to give to your people, to give them meat, Lord, in due season. We pray, Lord, that you bless and anoint this message as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Nothing is sacred to the defiled. To those that are defiled and unbelieving, there is nothing off limits. There's nothing sacred. There's nothing holy. That's why you see today unholy men holding the gospel, holding the word, holding the truth in their hands, in their possession. They do not know the difference between that which is holy and that which is unholy. Did you know that somebody that is defiled, their conscience is defiled, that they are not capable of seeing that which is clean and pure. They cannot see or comprehend that which is holy and pure. To them, everything is defiled. Dear God. Do we see an example of this in the scripture where the conscience becomes defiled take a look Genesis chapter 2 verse 25 and they were both naked 
the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. What happened? What happened from there to here? The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of their Creator. From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where art thou? Notice he's not saying Adam's name. Are you listening? His sheep know his voice, and he calls his own by name. But these are not his anymore. Are you listening? He's not calling Adam by name anymore. He says, where art thou? Something happened to Adam's relationship with God. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Why are you afraid, Adam? Because I was naked. And I hid myself. Listen to what God says. Listen to what God says. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you you were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Have you disobeyed me, Adam? Paul the Apostle helps us to understand exactly what happened, folks. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, or 11, verse 3. Paul says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You see, Adam and Eve's minds had become corrupted. Are you listening? And unbelieving. Adam and Eve ended up becoming like this. Nothing is pure. Nothing is wholesome. Nothing is good. Amen? Have you ever seen somebody with an evil eye? They're looking for something. Well, that person can't be that pure. Amen. It's got to be something wrong with them. And I'm going to, I intend to find out what it is. And if I can't find something, I'm going to make it up. Amen. To the defiled, to the unbelieving, nothing is pure. Amen. They even falsely accused Jesus Christ, pure, spotless Lamb of God, and they found fault 
with him. Why? Because to the defiled, the unbelieving, nothing is sacred. Nothing is holy. Nothing is off limits. Nothing is pure. Are you listening? When you're dealing with those with a defiled conscience, you can't expect them to understand your values. Amen. Your standard of living in the gospel, they can't understand that. They can't comprehend it. And nor do they want to. That's why there are those today that are trying to mix themselves with that which is holy. That's what we see in the book of Revelation. A mixture of the hot and cold. We see a mixture of flesh and spirit. Amen. What was it that that defiled the human race? that caused the conscience of the human race to become defiled. All the way back to the garden, it was the serpent, according to Paul. Amen. So how do we get back to simplicity that is in Christ? Innocence and purity, holiness. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. We have a high priest over the house of God. Amen. And his blood, not the blood of a spotless lamb, like in the Old Testament, but his own blood. Praise the Lord. His own blood, his own divine life. Praise the Lord. He washes away all the guilty stains. I've shared this with you before. Man said to my pastor, he said, I don't understand how another man's blood can wash away my sin. And my pastor said, I agree with you. But this was not just another man. Amen. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen, people. Faith in his blood. 
forgiveness through his blood, a cleansing of the conscience, a putting away of sin. Amen. Be ye holy, even as the Lord is holy. And that can be accomplished only by the blood. We have a high priest over the house of God. Amen. We have a new covenant, a new testament. Amen? In the New Testament, the putting away of sin forever. Forever. Amen, people. Praise the Lord. He is faithful to forgive us of all our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins. Amen, people. See, that's where the rubber meets the road there. If we confess our sins. See, You can go in denial and you're not going to be washed. You're not going to be cleansed. Amen. We see Adam and Eve blaming anybody but themselves. Amen. Who are you blaming? Who are you blaming? If you will not take the responsibility for your own actions, for your own deeds, for your own sin, who are you blaming? Oh, well, it's the devil's fault. Tell that to God. Eve said, it's the serpent. It's his fault. I still see Eve being banished from the garden, just like Adam. God wasn't buying it. The scripture says Eve was beguiled. She was in the transgression. Amen. The serpent beguiled Eve. Amen. And then she deceived Adam. Amen. Either way, God wasn't pleased with either one of them. Drove them out of the garden. Are you listening? Separated them from the tree of life lest they would live forever in that state. Amen, folks. The blood of Jesus Christ. That's why God made coats for Adam and Eve. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen. It takes God's life to cover us. Praise the Lord. Now that animal that was slain for Adam and Eve to make coats for them, that was not God. But it was by faith looking forward to what Jesus would do on the cross. Are you listening? It was through faith. 
And it wasn't Adam and Eve's faith. It was God's provision. It was his graciousness. Did you know from that day forward? There was an innocence lost between even Adam and Eve. They never looked at each other the same again. Amen, folks. When you don't wait, when you're not virgins and you don't wait, you defile your marriage. You defile your marriage bed. Can God heal that? Can God cleanse that? Absolutely. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But how many of his own people are living in a marriage that's defiled because they did not wait? Amen. It's what happened with Adam and Eve. Not because they didn't wait, but because they disobeyed God. Amen, folks. In the scripture, if a virgin loses her virginity, passes the flower of her age, she is to marry. Amen. Otherwise, it's fornication. She becomes defiled. That's what's going on all over this country right now and all over the world. Fornication. Defiling the conscience to where you can't even have a marriage or relationship that's pure in most cases. Thank God there are some that don't fit in that category. There are some that have a marriage that's pure. The bed is undefiled. Amen. I told you this was strong meat. Amen. This is meat for God's people. But if you have become defiled, your conscience has become defiled, and the relationship in your marriage has become defiled, thank God there's a high priest over the house of God. Thank God that there's the blood of Jesus Christ that can cleanse your conscience. And his pure water of his word that can wash your body. Isn't that wonderful? That God could be merciful to you. And that you and your spouse could have a pure marriage, a pure relationship, a pure, undefiled bed. Oh, praise the Lord. Innocence is what the devil's after. Satan is after innocence. He's after purity. He's trying to destroy today the innocence of the children. How many know Satan wants to destroy your children? Wants to destroy their minds. Look what he's doing to the children in these LBGTQ communities. Nothing is sacred. Nothing's off limits. Amen. We're living in an hour when nothing is pure. Nothing is holy. Nothing is sacred. 
Hey, man, what happened when Uzza touched the Ark of God and tried to stable it when it almost fell over, he thought? The Bible says he was smitten and killed before David. Hey, man. Thought he could reach out and touch the ark of God. See, they were rolling the cart or the ark on a, on a new cart. If you know the story, the Philistines had stole the Ark of the Covenant and they had made it a cart for it and they were rolling it around behind a beast. God's Ark. Can you imagine? That represents the presence of God, the throne of God, the mercy seat where the cherubims are over and now it's being rolled around behind a filthy animal. And finally, they got the ark back. They destroyed that cart. You know, you put wheels on it, roll it around, makes it easier, doesn't it? But didn't you know God had a due order that that ark was to be placed upon the staves and upon the shoulders of the priests? That's the only way it was to be born. And those are all types. Are you listening? The rings on the ark have to do with a marriage. The staves is faith. Those staves were to be put through the rings and never removed. And that's the only way that the ark was to be born on the shoulders, on the staves, on the shoulders of the priest. Amen. But here it is being rolled around behind a beast. So Israel gets the ark back and they destroyed the cart. They burnt the wood using it for fuel to sacrifice the animals that were being used to carry or to pull the cart that was carrying the ark. And all of a sudden we see David and Israel rolling the cart. And the Bible says it's a new cart with the ark of God on it. You see, they learned Something from the Philistines, the enemies of God. Oh, that looked a lot easier. They weren't being smitten. They weren't being killed. And so they built a new cart. Are you listening? And they're rolling the ark on a new cart. And the scripture says the oxen stumbled. And Uzzah reached out to stable the ark so it wouldn't fall over. Uzzah, did you forget something? Nobody's to touch that ark. Except the priests. How many know the ark itself had staves? Not just other parts of furniture, but the ark had staves. And it was to be born on the staves. It was not to be touched. You weren't supposed to touch that ark. Even the priests were not to touch the ark. That's why the staves were put through the rings and they were on the ark is so that They were only to touch the staves to bear the ark. And Uzzah thinks, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to help God. I'm going to do some great thing. 
You talk about self-righteousness, a generation that thinks they're helping God. Amen. God didn't think Uzzah was trying to help him. You remember after the resurrection, Jesus said to Mary, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to the Father. Jesus is a, uh, the ark is a type of Christ. The ark is a type of Jesus. So Uzzah, when he touched the ark, he died. Amen. To the defiled and the unbelieving, nothing is sacred. Nothing's holy. Nothing's off limits. But how many know God placed a difference between the holy and the profane? There's still a difference today. Amen. The Bible says that these ministers today that are holding the truth in unrighteousness, and it means to hold back the truth, not just to hold it. It says the judgment of God is revealed. In fact, it says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against them. See, man thinks today that there's not going to be any repercussions. There's not going to be any consequence for touching the holy things of God. Well, I will assure you, there is. How many know that when they partook of the communion unworthily, they were dropping like flies? They were dying. There was many sick among them, and they were dying. It says many do sleep because they partook of the communion unworthily. Years ago, I was in Florida, and I was in a movie theater where they were having a church service just to see what it was like. And it was a connection to a mega church. It was the overflow from a mega church, and they weren't even having a regular service. They were just having the service from the mega church pumped into this movie theater. At the end of the service, everybody in that movie theater took communion. Are you listening? And that's when I left. Bunch of people all around me. I knew they weren't saved. And that's what they're doing today. They think by taking communion, all of a sudden it makes them worthy or it makes them holy or somehow the communion they call it transubstantiation or something like that in the Catholic Church. Sub, sam, uh, substation, I think. I can't remember. And the idea is, is that when you partake of the communion, you're actually partaking of the literal body of Christ. And that charismatic bunch out there is following that teaching in the Catholic Church. So you don't have to live right. You don't have to be even saved. You don't have to confess your sins. You can partake of communion and be made holy just by partaking of communion. And I heard Donald Trump saying that. I take my little cracker and I take my little juice. And he said, I like doing that. I feel cleansed afterwards. Dear God, I feel cleansed by some grape juice or some wine and, and uh, a cracker. But that is what's going on today. Anybody listening? God has placed a separation between that which is holy and that which is profane. Amen. How many know that's what the abomination that brings desolation? They're, they're taking that which is holy and they're profaning it. Amen. I mean, know the land, Jerusalem, that, that's God's land. 
Amen? But how many know that everything's God's? The earth and the fullness thereof. It's all His. And you have men today that think they have a right to rule over men. You have those that think they have a right to rule over God's heritage in the house of God. See, God's going to bring all this to judgment. He owns it all. It's all his. And man is going to give account. The day of reckoning is coming. The day when man is given his wages is coming. Jesus said his reward is with him to give to every man according to his deed. Amen. So based on your works, that's the reward you're going to receive. That's the wages you're going to receive. Salvation's not a wage or a reward. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But there are rewards in the kingdom for the righteous. But salvation itself is not a reward. It's a gift. And if you don't receive that gift, you'll never receive rewards. Amen? Receiving the gift of salvation just gets you in the race. It's just your entry into the race. But you got to win the race. You got to cross the finish line to receive a crown. Praise the Lord. Undefiled. Incorruptible. But if you will not place a difference between that which is holy and profane, God's going to. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. going to separate the holy from the profane. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's going to separate the precious from the vile. Praise God. You know, during the Great Tribulation, they won't be able to tell the difference between the wheat and the tares until they're grown up. It's going to get really bad during the Great Tribulation. Amen. When men's consciences are so defiled, nothing is holy. When nobody... can trust anybody in the sense that there's no way that you can be of God. You, How can you be God? You know, you understand what I'm saying? There's going to be such paranoia beyond what we see today that it will be almost impossible if it's not your own family for you to trust somebody else. Are you listening? Bible says brother's going to supplant brother. Amen. Said that children are going to rise up against their parents. Can you imagine a world that's so full of suspicion? That's what an evil conscience is. That's what it is to be defiled. To be suspicious. See, when the serpent said to Eve, God's keeping something from you. He's not telling you the truth. Eve began to be suspicious of God. Has anybody ever dealt with someone that's suspicious all the time? It's because that person is defiled. Their conscience is defiled and they're not believing. Amen. 
But even if you're saved and you've become defiled, your conscience has become defiled, and everything is undefiled to you. Nobody's pure. Nobody's holy. Nobody's good. Nobody's trustworthy. Nobody's faithful. There is forgiveness. There is a high priest over the house of God. Amen? Do your first works over again. Return to your first love and be washed and be cleansed. Amen. Let us draw near with a true heart. James said, you that are double-minded become defiled. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. James was speaking to those that had become defiled, their consciences. Amen. Believers that had become unbelievers and friends with the world, friendship with the world, enemies of God. And James said to them, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. They had become double-minded. Their conscience had become evil. Defiled. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil eye, from an evil conscience, from an evil heart, and our bodies washed with pure water. Praise the Lord. God's people should never be suspicious. If you are suspicious of anyone, now there's a difference when you have fact, when you have evidence. Amen. Probable cause doesn't get it, people. Do you have actual evidence and fact Amen. If you do, you're supposed to go before the church. And if they won't listen when you go before the church, first you're supposed to go to your brother. And if he won't listen and won't reconcile, then you're supposed to go before the church. And if he still won't reconcile, then you ought to put him out. Are you listening? Until he does repent. And is, until he is willing to be reconciled to his brother. But if you don't have evidence, all you have is suspicion. Basing your case on suspicion. Amen. Amen. And that's what's going on today. We have a lot of suspicion, even in the house of God, even in the household of faith. And it's because somebody's been listening to the serpent. Amen. Somebody's listening to the whisper, to the evil one. Huh? Suggesting things. Amen. When you become defiled in your conscience, you'll even have suspicion about your own husband or wife when there's no merit, when there's no grounds. 
when there's no evidence. Amen, people. That's how Satan operates. If he can keep suspicion in a relationship, it can never be healthy. It can never be wholesome. It can never be pure. So you see, it comes down to forgiveness. Amen? If there's any unforgiveness, there will be defilement. How much more if in a relationship with God, in a marriage with God. You think you're going to be married to God through the Lamb of God? You think you're going to be married, become one with God, and you have suspicion in your heart of your brother, your sister, or even God himself? Anything that's not of faith is sin. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, full assurance of faith, without wavering, without doubting, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Amen. Long as there's breath in our lungs, we can confess our sins. If you have ought against your brother, you can fix that. It can be fixed. If you'll go to the cross, if you'll go to Christ, if you'll go to Calvary, amen, it can be fixed. Failure is not final with the Father. Praise the Lord. To the pure... Everything is pure. Why? Because to the pure, they don't live in suspicion of everybody. When you're pure, you're not looking for trouble. How many know trouble came looking for Jesus? Jesus didn't go around looking for trouble. Jesus didn't go out of his way to go and rebuke the Pharisees. They came looking for him. He said, I was about my father's business. His father's business was not spending time, wasting time with the religious of his day, the self-righteous. They would come seek him out, trying to find fault. Amen? They were trying to trap him in his words. Jesus didn't go looking for them. And when they would come out against him, when they would come out in a conspiracy to try to trap him, he rebuked them. He put them in their place and even defended some as they were being persecuted. Are you listening? But Jesus did not go out of his way. That's not why he came to condemn men. He didn't come to destroy men. They sure wanted to destroy him and condemn him. Amen. Look at Jesus on the cross, people. To the undefiled or to the defiled and the unbelieving, nothing is sacred. Nothing is precious. Nothing's holy. Nothing's pure. Amen. I want to say this in closing. If you're all the time being suspicious of others, you've got an evil conscience. Amen. And I didn't say it. The Word says it. The Scriptures say it. But did you know you can have a clean conscience? 
a clear conscience. And that is through the blood. That is through forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. God bless you. Satan rage.